There's a proverb that says behind every great man is a great woman. That's certainly true of SpaceX. The projects are the brainchild of SpaceX founder Elon Musk. Overseeing the day-to-day -day operations at SpaceX, however, falls on the shoulders of President and Chief Operating Officer Gwen Shotwell. Shotwell is charged with turning Musk's bold vision into sustainable business. She juggles the risk behind the scenes. She now even assumes oversight of the company's Starship program and Starbase facility. So, this is the time to find out everything about this great woman at SpaceX. Growing up in Libertyville, a smallish town north of Chicago near the border with Wisconsin, Shotwell's life revolved around extracurricular activities as well as work in the classroom. But that would begin to change on a Saturday during her freshman or sophomore year. Some instinct prompted her mother to take Shotwell to the Society of Women Engineers event at the Illinois Institute of Technology. And there, Shotwell soaked up career advice from a panel that included an electrical engineer, a chemical engineer, and a mechanical engineer. Was I really admired the mechanical engineer that sat on that panel, and uh, I loved her suit. And <laughs> not, not a joke. I'm not exaggerating. The years have not uh, have not changed this story, and uh, it caused me. To, it, I was comfortable with her. I loved clothes at the time too, and I went up and I asked her about her suit and what she did, and she owned her own company and uh, she really inspired me. And that day, I said, okay, mom, you can get off my back. I will be a mechanical engineer. Her college proved a difficult transition. Her freshman year grades were marginal due to an active social life, and she struggled with engineering classes. A breakthrough came during a hardcore analysis class. Though she paid attention to professors' lectures, the dense material seemed incomprehensible. But as Shotwell spent a weekend really trying to understand the fundamentals for a final exam, it suddenly began to make sense. When her professor handed back exams to the class, she had made the highest grade. It must have surprised the teacher because when he returned Shotwell's test, he gave her a quizzical look. With her newfound confidence in improving grades, Shotwell began applying for a multitude of engineering jobs, and on January 28, 1986, she had an interview with IBM. As Shotwell looked on with increasing horror, the vehicle broke apart 73 seconds into the flight while still in clear view of ground-based cameras. She soldiered on to the interview, not quite able to get past what she'd just seen. One week, Shotwell would find herself in a school for auto mechanics in downtown Detroit. So me and the dudes were rebuilding engines, doing valve jobs, rebuilding transmissions, she said. Although she loved the garage work, the automotive engineering proved less than inspiring. A lot of the really difficult and thus interesting tasks were farmed out to contractors, often in foreign countries. So in 1988, after completing a graduate degree in applied mathematics, the Midwestern girl decided to move across the country for a career in a field that was still America-led, spaceflight. She took a job as the thermal analyst at the Aerospace Corporation, Los Angeles. She got her first real taste of space in 1991 with the STS-39 space shuttle mission. As a thermal analyst, Shotwell ran models on supercomputers of shuttle heating in real time as it orbited Earth and fed that data to Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. This was fun, but after a while, Shotwell realized that a company like the Aerospace Corporation, which mostly did analysis, might not be the best fit for her. She joined Microcosm mostly focusing on selling services to the government and space firms she had gotten to know through the Aerospace Corporation. One day, her friend Koningsman took a new job at SpaceX in May of 2002. Shotwell celebrated by taking him to lunch at their favorite spot in El Segundo, a Belgian restaurant named Chef Hans. As they pulled up, Koningsman invited Shotwell inside to see the new digs. Just come in and meet Elon, he said. The impromptu meeting might have lasted 10 minutes. Shotwell nodded along as Musk talked about his plans to bring down the cost of launches by building his own rocket engine and keeping development of other key components in-house. For Shotwell, who had worked for more than a decade in aerospace and knew well its lethargic pace, it all made sense. 
she mentioned that the company should probably hire someone to sell the small single-engine Falcon 1 rocket full-time. Later that afternoon, Musk decided that he should indeed hire someone full-time. He created a vice president of sales position and encouraged Shotwell to apply. The prospect of a new job had not been on Shotwell's radar. She enjoyed her job. Moreover, by the summer of 2002, Shotwell felt like she needed some stability in her life. Unlike most of the recent college graduates Musk was hiring to work day and night, Shotwell had a lot to balance in her personal life. Almost 40 years old, in the midst of a divorce with two young children to care for and a new condo to renovate. It would be good for the aerospace industry to have someone like Musk come in and shake things up. But did she want to disrupt her life as well? I was driving on the freeway here in LA when it finally hit me. I was being a total idiot. Who cares if I tried this job and either I failed or the company failed? What I recognized at that moment was that it was the trying part that was the most important. Try that risky thing. Be a part of something exciting. I don't want to imagine what my life and career would be like had I said no. I'm sure I would have been fine, but I would not have been a part of this amazing company working alongside such extraordinary people. Not taking that job would have been the fail. Musk might not have realized it at the time, but he had just made arguably the company's most important hire. Musk brought funding, engineering skill, leadership, and more to SpaceX. But to succeed in the global launch industry would require more than this. Aerospace companies in the U.S. and institutional rocket businesses in Russia, Europe, and elsewhere jealously guard their launch business. NASA, the U.S. Air Force, and other government agencies were generally comfortable with the existing state of things, and the large U.S. aerospace contractors had well-oiled congressional lobbies to ensure the order prevailed. To take all of this on, Musk needed a partner who possessed his brashness, but also understood this political terrain and had the sophistication to navigate it. And this is where Shotwell would come in. She and Musk are both different, and the same. He's blunt and at times awkward. She's all smiles and smooth talk. But beneath their differing veneers are their simpatico, sharing the same fearless philosophy of charging forward headlong, seeking to mold the industry in their image. Accepting Musk's job offer liberated Shotwell from the constraints of a more traditional aerospace company. During her first day at work, she set about formulating a strategy to sell the Falcon 1 rocket to both the U.S. government as well as small satellite customers. Seated in the cubicle farm at 1310 East Grand in El Segundo, Shotwell wrote a plan of action for sales. Musk took one look at it and told her he did not care about plans, just get on with the job. I was like, oh, okay, this is refreshing. I don't even have to write up a damn plan, Shotwell recalled. That was her first real taste of Musk management style. Don't talk about doing things, just do things. Furthermore, it's entirely possible that SpaceX wouldn't have survived if her sales acumen hadn't convinced NASA to take a billion dollar bet on the company in 2008. But NASA ultimately took that bet right when SpaceX needed it most. And Shotwell went on to help secure another several billion dollars of launch contracts from all possible sectors. She became president and COO after navigating NASA's first major SpaceX contract in 2008 and still holds both positions 14 years later, helping SpaceX to become the most powerful rocket company in the world. This year, Musk explicitly asked Shotwell, SpaceX's biggest gun, to oversee the Starship program in his unplanned absence. It's unclear if that means she'll be handed the day-to-day -day operations of other major SpaceX programs to direct reports or if the new position involves an expansion of her existing Starbase and Starship oversight. But it's safe to assume she's leading SpaceX to have the first Starship orbital flight.